Basic Interpretation of HRCT of Chest, Part 2. Presented by Dr. Jul Mohsin Udin, DTCD, FCPS, Pulmonology. High Attenuation Pattern. Increased lung attenuation is called ground glass opacity, GGO, if there is a hazy increase in lung opacity without obscuration of underlying vessels and is called consolidation if the increase in lung opacity obscures the vessels. In both ground glass and consolidation the increase in lung density is the result of replacement of air in the alveoli by fluid or cells. In GGO the density of the intrabronchial air appears darker as the air in the surrounding alveoli. This is called the dark bronchus sign in consolidation, there is exclusively air left intrabronchial. This is called the air bronchogram. Dark bronchus sign in ground glass opacity. Complete obscuration of vessels in consolidation. Ground glass opacity. Ground glass opacity, GGO, represents Filling of the alveolar spaces partially with pus, edema, hemorrhage, inflammation or tumor cells. The location of the abnormalities in ground glass pattern can be helpful. Upper zone predominance, respiratory bronchiolitis, PCP. Lower zone predominance, UIP, and SIP, DIP. Thus ground glass itself is very non-specific. Not surprisingly, there is a big overlap in the causes of ground glass opacity and consolidation and some diseases may present with both areas of ground glass and consolidation. Treatable or not treatable? Ground glass opacity is non-specific, but highly significant finding since 60-80% to 80 of patients with ground glass opacity on HRCT have an active and potentially treatable lung disease. In the other cases the lung diseases are not treatable as those are usually associated with HRCT findings of fibrosis, such as traction bronchiectasis and honeycombing. Example On the left GGO without fibrosis and potentially treatable. But on the right, in addition there is traction bronchiectasis, indicating the presence of fibrosis. This case is one of the possible patterns of non-specific interstitial pneumonia NSIP. Left, no fibrosis, so potentially treatable lung disease. Right, fibrosis, so non-treatable lung disease. NSIP versus UIP pattern. NSIP is characterized histologically by a relatively uniform pattern of cellular interstitial inflammation associated with variable degrees of fibrosis. As in UIP, usual interstitial pneumonia, it mainly involves the dependent regions of the lower lobes, but NSIP lacks the extensive fibrosis with honeycombing. NSIP may be idiopathic or associated with collagen vascular diseases or exposure to drugs or chemicals. NSIP has a relative good prognosis and the majority of patients respond to treatment with corticosteroids. This outcome is quite different from that seen in UIP which has a poor prognosis. Non-specific interstitial pneumonitis, NSIP. Notice lower lobe predominance. Consolidation. Consolidation is synonymous with airspace disease. When you think of the causes of consolidation, think of what is replacing the air in the alveoli. Is it pus, edema, blood or tumor cells, table on the left? Even fibrous tissue as in UIP, NSIP and long-standing sarcoidosis can replace the air in the alveoli and cause consolidation. Differential diagnosis of consolidation depends on pattern of onset. Acute consolidation is seen in Pneumonias, bacterial, mycoplasma, PCP Pulmonary edema due to heart failure or ARDS Hemorrhage Acute eosinophilic pneumonia. Chronic consolidation is seen in organizing pneumonia. Chronic eosinophilic pneumonia. Fibrosis in UIP and NSIP. Bronchoalveolar cell carcinoma or lymphoma. Most patients who are evaluated with HRCT usually are chronic consolidation, which limits the differential diagnosis. Two patients with chronic consolidations as a result of COP, 
cryptogenic organizing pneumonia. On the left two cases with chronic consolidation. There are patchy non-segmental consolidations in a suppleural and peripheral distribution. The final diagnosis was cryptogenic organizing pneumonia COP. In chronic eosinophilic pneumonia the HRCT findings will be the same, but there will be eosinophilia. Bronchoalveolar carcinoma can also look like this. Short note, organizing pneumonia, consolidation pattern. Organizing pneumonia represents an inflammatory process in which the healing process is characterized by organization and cicatrization of the exudate rather than by resolution and resorption. It is also described as unresolved pneumonia. If no cause can be identified it is called cryptogenic organizing pneumonia COP. It was described in earlier years as bronchiolitis obliterans organizing pneumonia BOOP. Patients with COP typically present with a several month history of non-productive cough. Many cases are idiopathic, but OP may also be seen in patients with pulmonary infection, drug reactions, collagen vascular disease, Wegener's granulomatosis and after toxic fume inhalation. Short note, chronic eosinophilic pneumonia, consolidation pattern. On the left a case of chronic eosinophilic pneumonia. It was a patient with low-grade fever, progressive shortness of breath and an abnormal chest radiograph. There was a marked eosinophilia in the peripheral blood. Like in COP we see patchy non-segmental consolidations in a suppleural distribution. Chronic eosinophilic pneumonia is an idiopathic condition characterized by extensive filling of alveoli by an infiltrate consisting primarily of eosinophils. Chronic eosinophilic pneumonia is usually associated with an increased number of eosinophils in the peripheral blood and patients respond promptly to treatment with steroids. Short note, bronchoalveolar cell carcinoma, consolidation and ground glass opacity. On the left we see consolidation and ground glass opacity in a patient with persistent chest abnormalities and weight loss without signs of infection. This suggested a chronic disease. There is no honeycombing or traction bronchiectasis, so we can rule out fibrosis. The weight loss is suggestive of a malignant disease. Histology revealed bronchoalveolar cell carcinoma. Bronchoalveolar cell carcinoma BAC, may present as solitary nodular mass, 40% of patients, focal or diffuse consolidation, 30%, as in this case. Diffuse ill-defined central lobular nodules, 30%, due to endobronchial spread. 3. Mosaic attenuation, special type of high attenuation pattern. Causes of high attenuation pattern. The term mosaic attenuation is used to describe density differences between affected and non-affected lung areas. There are patchy areas of black and white lung. The role of the radiologist is to determine which part is abnormal, the black or the white lung. When ground glass opacity presents as mosaic attenuation consider three conditions. Infiltrative process, white, adjacent to normal lung, black, e.g., hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Normal lung appearing relatively dense, white, adjacent to lung with air trapping, black e.g., bronchiolitis. Hyperperfused, white, lung adjacent to oligemic lung, black, due to chronic thromboembolic disease, e.g., pulmonary embolism. There are two diagnostic hints for further differentiation. Look at expiratory scans for when air trapping. Look at the vessels if the vessels are difficult to see in the black lung as compared to the white lung, then it is likely that the black lung is abnormal. Then there are two possibilities, obstructive bronchiolitis more air trapping so less vessels and more black, or chronic pulmonary embolism, vessel obstructed so vessel not seen resulting hypoperfusion so lung is darker. Sometimes these can be differentiated with an expiratory scan. 
if the vessels are the same in the black lung and white lung, then you are looking at a patient with infiltrative lung disease, like the one on the right with the pulmonary hemorrhage, as blood vessels are not blocked. It is visualized and due to hemorrhage that part is whiter. Temporary bronchiolitis, mosaic attenuation, with air trapping is seen in post-infection, inhalation of toxin, rheumatoid arthritis, sjogren, post-transplant, drug reaction, penicillamine, hypersensitivity pneumonitis, HP, is an allergic lung disease caused by the inhalation of antigens contained in a variety of organic dusts. Farmer's lung is the best known HP syndrome and results from the inhalation of fungal organisms that grow in moist hay. HP usually presents in two forms either as ground glass in a mosaic distribution as in this case or as centrilobular nodules of ground glass density, asna nodules. When they are confluent, HRCT shows diffuse ground glass. Example. On the left a patient with ground glass pattern in a mosaic distribution. The clue here is the enlargement of pulmonary arteries, arrow, in the areas of ground glass. The ground glass appearance is the result of hyperperfused lung adjacent to oligemic lung with reduced vessel caliber due to chronic thromboembolic disease. On the left another patient with ground glass pattern in a mosaic distribution. Again the ground glass appearance is the result of hyperperfused lung with large vessels adjacent to oligemic lung with small vessels, yellow arrow, due to chronic thromboembolic disease. Imbally adherent to the wall intravascularly, blue arrow, are typical for chronic thromboembolism. Low attenuation pattern. The fourth pattern includes abnormalities that result in decreased lung attenuation or air-filled lesions. These include emphysema, lung cysts, lamb, lip, langerhans, cell histiocytosis, bronchectasis, honeycombing. Most diseases with a low attenuation pattern can be readily distinguished on the basis of HRCT findings. 1. Emphysema. Emphysema typically presents as areas of low attenuation without visible walls as a result of parenchymal destruction. Centrilobular emphysema. Most common type. Irreversible destruction of alveolar walls in the centrilobular portion of the lobule. Upper lobe predominance and uneven distribution. Strongly associated with smoking. Panlobular emphysema. Affects the whole secondary lobule. Lower lobe predominance. In alpha-1 antitreps and deficiency, but also seen in smokers with advanced emphysema. Paracetyl emphysema Paracetyl emphysema is localized near fissures and pleura and is frequently associated with bully formation, area of emphysema larger than 1 cm in diameter. Apical bully may lead to spontaneous pneumothorax. Giant bully occasionally cause severe compression of adjacent lung tissue. Panlobular emphysema on the left a typical case of panlobular emphysema. There is uniform destruction of the underlying architecture of the secondary pulmonary lobules, leading to widespread areas of abnormally low attenuation. Pulmonary vessels in the affected lung appear fewer and smaller than normal. In severe panlobular emphysema, the characteristic appearance of extensive lung destruction and the associated paucity of vascular markings are easily distinguishable from normal lung parenchyma. On the other hand, mild and even moderately severe panlobular emphysema can be very subtle and difficult to detect on HRCT. 2. Cystic Lung Disease Lung cysts are defined as radiolucent areas with a wall thickness of less than 4 mm. Cystic lung disease is as listed in the table on the left. Cavities are defined as radiolucent areas with a wall thickness of more than 4 mm and are seen in infection, TB, staph, fungal, hydatid, septic imli, squamous cell carcinoma and Wegener's disease. Langerhans cell histiocytosis, LCH. On the left a case with multiple round and bizarre shaped cysts. There was an upper lobe predominance. The patient had a long history of smoking. 
This combination of findings is typical for Langerhans cell histiocytosis. Langerhans cell histiocytosis LCH, is an idiopathic disease characterized in its early stages by granulomatous nodules containing Langerhans histiocytes and dosinophils. In its later stages, the granulomas are replaced by fibrosis and the formation of cysts. It is a rare variety of ILD. The majority of patients are young or middle-aged adults presenting with non-specific symptoms of cough and dyspnea. Up to 20% of patients present with pneumothorax and over 90% of patients are smokers. Most cysts appear round, but can also have bizarre shapes, bilobed or cloverleaf shaped. An upper lobe predominance in the size and number of cysts is common. Lymphangia mimetosis. On the left a case with multiple cysts that are evenly distributed through gout the lung, in contrast to LCH. Notice the pneumothorax. This combination of findings is typical for lymphangia mimetosis, LAM. Lymphangia mimetosis is a rare disease characterized by progressive proliferation of spindle cells, resembling smooth muscle. Proliferation of these cells along the bronchioles leads to air trapping and the development of thin-walled lung cysts. Rupture of these cysts can result in pneumothorax. Other features of LAM include adenopathy and pleural effusion. Lymphangia mimetosis occurs only in women, usually of childbearing age, between 17 and 50 years. Identical clinical, radiologic, and pathologic pulmonary changes are seen in about 1% of patients with tuberous sclerosis. Most patients die within 10 years of the onset of symptoms. Honeycombing. Honeycombing is defined by the presence of small cystic spaces with irregularly thickened walls composed of fibrous tissue. Honeycomb cysts often predominate in the peripheral and supleural lung regions regardless of their cause. Supleural honeycomb cysts typically occur in several contiguous layers. This finding can allow honeycombing to be distinguished from paraseptal emphysema in which supleural cysts usually occur in a single layer. Honeycombing. Because of the cystic appearance, honeycombing is a low attenuation pattern. Pathologically, honeycombing is defined by the presence of small cystic spaces lined by bronchiolar epithelium with thickened walls composed of dense fibrous tissue. Honeycombing is the typical feature of usual interstitial pneumonia, UIP. IPF. The case on the left shows supleural honeycomb cysts in several contiguous layers. There is also a lower lobe predominance and widespread traction bronchiectasis. These findings are typical for usual interstitial pneumonia, UIP. UIPOR is a pathological diagnosis and usually shown at lung biopsy, when honeycombing is visible. Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, IPF accounts for more than 60% of the cases of UIP. UIP with lung fibrosis is also a common pattern of autoimmune disease and drug-related lung injury. A long list of drugs have been implicated, but this pattern is most commonly the result of cytotoxic chemotherapeutic agents such as bleomycin, buulfan, vincristine, methotrexate, adromycin etc. Distribution of pathological lesions within the lung may help to reach the diagnosis of ILD. Upper lung zone preference is seen in Inhaled particles, pneumoconiosis, silica or coal. Smoking related diseases, centrilobular emphysema, respiratory bronchiolitis, RBILD, Langerhans, cell histiocytosis. Hypersensitivity pneumonitis sarcoidosis. Lower zone preference is seen in UIP, aspiration, pulmonary edema. Central distribution is seen in sarcoidosis and cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Peripheral distribution is mainly seen in cryptogenic organizing pneumonia, COP, chronic eosinophilic pneumonia and UIP. Additional findings, other than puenchymal change. Pleural effusion is seen in.
pulmonary edema. Lymphangitic spread of carcinoma, often unilateral. Tuberculosis. Lymphangiomatosis, LAM. Asbestosis. Hyaluron mediastinal lymphadenopathy. In sarcoidosis the common pattern is right paratracheal and bilateral hyaluronopathy, 1-2-3 sign. In lung carcinoma and lymphangitic carcinomatosis adenopathy is usually unilateral. Eggshell calcification in lymph nodes commonly occurs in patients with silicosis and coal workers pneumoconiosis and is sometimes seen in sarcoidosis, post-irradiation Hodgkin disease, blastomycosis and sclerodoma. Thank you all. End of part 2